Okay, peeps, welcome back. So today we're going to be going over how you can make $10,000 a month with YMAX. With that being said, let's get it. Okay, so first thing I want to go over here is the charts. Um, so as you guys can see, <clears throat> the chart of YMAX has actually been relatively stable since the inception of this fund so um you guys can basically see the opening price here the i'm not sure what this long wick is but yeah there was an opening price then the price went up then the price went down then the price is as you guys can see is basically more or less mirroring the market so we had kind of a dump here in march april and then kind of a resurgence after that so <clears throat> um the idea here is that this fund so far since inception again it hasn't been that around that long it's only been around for four months but so far it's been relatively stable um it's actually still up since its inception date so um i believe the open is right here or no sorry the open is the open of the candles right here so about 1980 as you guys can see the close price as of uh friday was 2025 so we are basically pretty much just going sideways so Again, worst case scenario, the price drops and it pays a massive dividend, kind of like the Defiance ETFs, most of them anyways, or Tesla or something like that. Mid case scenario, it goes sideways and pays out a huge dividend. Again, there's a lot of dividend paying stocks and um, <clears throat> uh, what are they called? CEFs and things like that. Um, that mostly go sideways, but they pay out pretty juicy dividends. So that's not really that uncommon. And the best case scenario goes up and also pays a pretty good dividend. So this one's mostly, um, I would say sideways and up in my opinion. Again, there is the potential for some a price appreciation. Uh, the other thing I want to point out here is in the event of a market crash, this thing likely will go down and it's going to take some time to recover. So I uh, do understand that too, as well. There is some risk here. So uh, do we actually own this? Yes, we do. So you can see on the portfolio here, we have a total of 127 shares and counting. We're still accumulating this, as a matter of fact. Last market day we had was pretty green. It was up 1.5%, so that's always good. If I go over here to YMAX, um, the actual YieldMax ETF's website, you guys can see that we've had four distributions so far, so pretty good payouts, and each one has been higher than the last that doesn't mean that it's always going to go up. I mean, it's, I'm sure it's going to fluctuate from month to month. It's never consistent, but uh, it's been pretty good so far. And the price has been relatively stable, which is an added bonus. So um, pretty much what WiMAX is, is for those of you guys that don't know, it is an accumulation of all of these stocks that they have available um, right now wrapped into one single fund with the exception of GDXY, I believe. So it has all these other ones in it, okay? It has Tesla, Apple, Amazon, Google, Netflix, Microsoft, JPM, uh, PayPal, Moderna, MicroStrategy. Um, I don't think it has the Ybit one yet either. I could be mistaken, but I'm pretty sure it doesn't. So uh, OARC, um, or I should say um, AR, ARKK, uh, Kathy Wood's uh, Innovation ETF, uh, NVIDIA, Meta, Coinbase, Disney, ExxonMobil, um, AMD, Square, and uh, C3 AI. So there is another fund that they have on here that is the MAG7 fund. That's also a pretty good fund. Price is relatively stable. But again, the reason I picked this one is it's, it's the reason being is because it's a little bit more diversified. So let's go over here to the calculator, kind of give you guys the numbers on how to do this. <clears throat> if this is something you want to do, again, not financial advice, um, understand what you're getting into before you get into this. So we got the numbers here. Um, it's actually an ETF, but it has me listed as an individual stock. Uh, distribution frequency is monthly. Yes, we do want to drip. Uh, 49 shares to start out. Again, this is pretty basic. This is how we usually start it. So <clears throat> if I go over here into the calculator, you guys can see $1,000 divided by the share price is how we came out to that share number. So uh, we'll start with an annual contribution of basically $600 a month, tax rate 15%. Again, I'm sure it's probably going to be higher than that, but it's hard to say what it's going to be from year to year because we do have elections coming up this year. And if tax if Trump wins, which I'm pretty confident he's going to win at this point, um, as a matter of fact, I think the odds of him winning is going to go up as we get into closer and closer to November until he does get elected. Uh, 
when he gets elected, we're going to have tax cuts. Okay. That's what happened last time Trump was in office. There was tax cuts, not tax increases. Okay. So it, there's a chance that the rate could come down to 15%, but whatever it is, it's probably going to be lower than what it is right now. Uh, so initial yield, 43%, pretty much just pulled this from the site, as you guys can see here. Again, that's the current yield for the, the for the uh, current month. It could change next month. We'll just have to wait and see. 1% 1, 1 share price appreciation. The reason why I picked 1% here for the price appreciation is because, again, the fund is moving mostly sideways. But if we were in a quantitative easing bull market, meaning that the Fed is printing money, the interest rates are at all-time lows, and we're still in a bull market, that's the most bullish scenario. There's a likelihood that this fund could go up. Okay, If it's chopping sideways in a QT bull market, it's probably going to go up in a QE bull market. That's just my opinion. So we'll pick a time frame here of 10 years. Already got the numbers calculated, as you guys can see. So pretty much you would hit that $10,000 a month mark by roughly around year nine. Again, 10000 is a really big number. Most people don't even make that in their full-time job. So you'd really be accomplishing something significant here by doing this. Now, if we take the numbers, let's say, and increase it a little bit to 1000 a month. Again, we'll roll out 10 years here. You guys can see that time frame is significantly shortened. So instead of it being nine years, it goes to, I think, roughly about seven and a half years at this point. Based on the numbers, <clears throat> if I were to go even more aggressive than this, and we'll say 2000 a month, then you guys can see it significantly shortened. So you now are down to roughly about six years to get to this point. And again, you don't have to go to 10,000. I mean, you can do whatever you want to, whatever, whatever your goal is. We're just kind of setting, setting like a really lofty goal here, like something huge. Uh, and I mean, personally, um, you know, we could do with like five or 6,000 a month. We don't need 10,000 10, a month, but this is for somebody who wants fat fire. Okay. Who wants to be able to financially independent, retire early, but also be able to have as much money to spend on whatever they want as they want. So we're not looking for barista fire or, or slim fire or fit fire or whatever you want to call it here. We're looking for fat fire. Okay, really, really fat fire. So we'll go ahead and double this up. Uh, do one more example here and we'll say 3000 a month, which again, some people can actually afford that. It depends on what your job is and you know net worth and uh, discretionary income and all, all that kind of stuff. But as you guys can see, uh, you basically would have reduced this down to five years again. Even if you got to 6000 a month, let's say, and you decided to keep your job, you wouldn't necessarily have to go as aggressive at this point because if you're pulling in 6000 a month and let's say you're just putting all of the dividends back in and you only put like, let's say, let's say you make 5000 a month, okay, after tax money in your job and you only want to put 1000 of that in every month, like you're not putting anything in, um, well, maybe let's say you have 1000 a month in other investments, but you have 1000 a month in this, so you have 3000 a month. Um, left over for like, you know, expenses and whatever else. Cause again, um, the idea is to retire early, right? So most people that are into fire are going to do everything they can to get there as fast as possible, but you wouldn't necessarily have to go, you know, just 2000% all the way until you get to year five, you could actually slow down a little bit here or even somewhere in here. Uh, once you get to about the halfway mark, there's nothing saying that you have to go all in 100% or 100,000% until the exact day that you get to that point. It's just kind of a synopsis and a generalized idea of how exactly to get there and um, just to show you what the possibilities are. So in terms of how much capital it would take up front in order to get this number, as you guys can see, we have 10000 a month here based on the current share price. Uh, times the current dividend, you'd basically need about 14,000 shares. Uh, times the current dividend is roughly about the 10,000 a month. So if I was to do 14,000 shares times the current price, so 2026, you'd be looking at about 283,000. Obviously, for most people, it is much easier to kind of snowball this into the 10,000 a month than it is to just say, okay, I'm just going to drop 300K on this. Some people can. Some people can do that. If you can do that, hey, great. Most people can't. So I'm just throwing some options out here. Anyways, this is how to make 10000 a month with the YMAX ETF. Hope you all enjoyed this content. Please like, comment, and subscribe, and we'll see you all later. Peace.